Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this video today we're going to try to fix up this internet radio. So I'm going to call this a tea break fix. At this moment in time I have no idea whether it's going to be easy or hard, but let's keep the video short and sweet. Pause the video, go get yourself a nice drink and relax with me over the next 10, 15 or 20 minutes depending on how challenging this is. I'm having a nice mug of Vimto, I'm being a big kid today. So let's get into it here. Now there's a very good reason why I bought a internet radio. I've already done one of these, the John Lewis one, ages ago. It was just left in my house, not really doing anything. So uh, I just mentioned it to my dad, does he want it? My dad's now like 81 years old and uh, he was born in Ireland, but he's lived over here since the, I don't know when, since the 60s, I'm not too sure, but a long time anyway. And uh, yeah, I gave it to him. That internet radio is like a lifeline for him. He, well not a lifeline, an entertainment lifeline. He loves it because he gets to listen to like Midwest radio and stuff, all these Irish channels that he tunes into. And there's been a few times where it's played up like things do and you have to turn it off and reset it. And I'm thinking if it fails, and let's say if it takes me a while to fix it, then I think he will be lost without it. That's the reason I bought another internet radio as a backup for him. So hopefully we can get this one working and then maybe he can have this one in his bedroom and then the other one is downstairs. So he's got a choice then. But really it's for backup. Now I'll flash up the eBay listing. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Whoa, that's really been damaged there. Do you know what? I think that's happened in that, I don't think that that wasn't mentioned in this, and I reckon that's happened when it was posted, uh, post, uh, posted. but uh, my dad's not going to care about that anyway. So I pay £30 in total, and the fault is down as it turns on, but there's no sound. Do you know what? I don't know if this did get damaged in the post. It's all, uh, it's all delaminating around here. Yeah, this doesn't compare to the John Lewis one at all. John Lewis one felt nice, this one there, uh, not so good. Right, let me plug it in, connect it up to the internet and see what it's doing. Actually, do you know what? I'm not going to connect it to the internet. This is going to work on DAB as well, isn't it? So, well, I presume it is. So I'll just see if it's got any sound. Right, that's not making any sense to me whatsoever. Nothing appears to be making any sense. So either it's not very user friendly or something's not working, but I'm gonna get the instructions online and then hopefully it will tell me either what I'm doing wrong or we now know maybe the fault is on something here and nothing to do with the sound. Right, well, it looks like this is called a Majority Sydney. That's the name of it. But I've gone through here and what's on here is not re resembling this whatsoever. So to begin with, it's not picking up any DAB stations and uh, nothing's making any sense as far as here. The only thing I can do is go through this same list over and over again. Normally it's go to menu, it should be DAB and then it should be uh, you know radio, Bluetooth, aux in, internet radio. Nothing on the menu is making sense whatsoever. Let's take this thing apart and let's see if just some fault finding will find out what's wrong with it. So now it's supposed to be 12 volts, two amps in. Let's just see what this is outputting, just in case it's weak. Maybe that's why it's not picking anything up. 12 volts, I think that's probably gonna be okay. Also, it doesn't look particularly old. So let's, uh, let's take this apart. We have screws around the back here, screws underneath. Let's just start undoing them and see what happens. So this is just a massive, uh, massive tube that can come out as well. That gives us access there. So we have speakers there, or a sorry speaker. Must be another one down here. Yes, there is. And we've got another control board at the front. Now, is there anything obvious here? This is rusty. I can see, oh, this is rusty down here. This has had water damage. Because when MDF gets wet, it kind of bubbles up, doesn't it? 
Yeah, and I think there's mold. Is that mold in here? Camera's not going to focus in there, but it doesn't look good, does it? Right, okay. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this fixed within a short amount of time. Let's undo the screws here, see if we can separate it out a bit more. Yeah, so you can see a little bit of rust here on the USB port. And you can see quite a bit of rust on this thing here. But the board itself looks okay. What else do we need to, uh, how do we get to this top bit? Well, it looks like there is screws around here, so I presume that this might pop up. I think I need to take it all apart. Right, that's got a lot of rust on it. So now, that's giving me a bit of hope. Maybe it's just a problem with the buttons up here. You can't select what you want to select. Okay, that's good. Could be an issue up there. Right now, how do we get the front part out? So this is one speaker here. This is the other speaker. And everything else is connected to this front board here. So now this is gonna be a bit destructive, isn't it? Thing is, it all has to come out because I need to see what's what. I have to see what's what, don't I? Look at that. Yeah, really rusty there. Do you know what? I bet this was left out in the rain. Now, good news is, I don't think this has been apart before. Oh, actually, look, you can see this comes with remote control. This one doesn't, but you're supposed to have remote control. But can you see there? That must be the IR sensor. Uh, so it's going to crease horribly, isn't it? Uh, now, how is it stuck down? There we go. Well, I can worry about straightening that off later on. You can already see that the whole thing's not gonna look very nice anyway, even if I do fix it, because the casing's quite damaged. But I think we will uh, I think we will get away with that. Well, it looks like that bend mark's always gonna be there, because look, it's pretty flat, but uh, we've still got the, the stress mark on the metal. Anyway, who cares? If it works, it works, that's the main thing. Right, so I presume we have to be undoing these screws around here. Can this push out now? Yes, it can, excellent. Look at that. So that attaches to there, and that attaches to here. So, Let's get the soldering iron on, and let's unsolder that and that. Right, are we now free to look at it? That goes there. Where does this go? That goes to the uh, the other board at the back, doesn't it? Excellent. Right, so apart from the speakers now, we are... We're okay. Yeah, that's definitely had some kind of mold growth in there. Look at that. Lovely. Have a nice breathing of that later. See what new disease I can get. Now, what are we uh, what are we gonna do? This board here, to be fair, looks okay. This board looks okay-ish. Ish. But this thing looks horrendous. Let's undo all these and see what we've got. It might become clear, maybe there's traces that are damaged. And maybe that's why you can't, it doesn't pick up any signal or something because maybe this is on stuck on orcs or something like that. 
Things might be shorted on here, which might be confusing the brain in here. Here we go. Right now, it says here power and it says PW mode here. So I don't have to worry about putting it in the wrong way round. This thing is filthy. The good thing about water damage though, normally you can see it. So for example, if, I, if this was perfect, I wouldn't know where to go from here. Is the fault on here, here or here? But now that I can see all this horrible corrosion here, then at least I can start. I'm not saying this is the thing that's at fault, but it gives me a clue where to start. So I think first things first, we should look into this thing here. So we know it works because when I turned it, the volume was working. Look at that here. What's this to do with? Preset number four. See if that's still working. Yeah, amazingly, it's working. Right, well, that's not doing anything. Good, so that's one faulty button. Excellent, menu's not doing anything. Is that the top one there, menu? Menu, yes it is, yeah. This one here, that's not doing anything, look. Fantastic, I think that's our full power button. Is not doing anything either. Right, okay, let's get the IPA. Let's give this a really good clean. And this could be a candidate actually for the ultrasonic cleaner. But let's get some gloves on IPA it to begin with and see if we can get it working. Brilliant. Right, so we've still got nothing on that one there. Or this one here. No, or that one. Now, I could take the lids off because they're kind of held in, but they're kind of plastic, not plastic welded, but it's like, uh, I presume when they're made, this is a thin bit of plastic going up. They put the metal lid on and then they just push down these plastic things. So it's kind of like a plastic plug. You have to cut the ends off here, pop this out. I would be able to fix them, definitely. It's just that when you put the lid back on, you kind of have to kind of glue them back on and it's not gonna be that great. Well, it, it probably would be a lasting repair, but, I did buy some of these switches up a while ago and they're pennies, they're not expensive at all. So I think they're like 10p each or something. So I'm gonna see if I've got the size that would fit here. Right, so I've got two lots of 10. Annoyingly, there's no price on here, but they weren't a lot. So you can see six by six by 4.3 millimeters, that would be how high it is. 6.6 .6 by five millimeters, again, how high it is. So the only difference is, we'll zoom in in a minute, but, uh, these ones would be the 4.3 millimeters because they're barely up at all. And this one has another 0.7 of a millimeter sticking up. I'll show you it closely in a minute. And this uh, SMT Momentary PCB Tactile Switch. So yeah, tactile switch, I think they're called. So uh, let's see what resembles the ones we've got on the board there. So you can see the difference between them here. how much the lid sticks up. So now, what would resemble these the most? Oh, uh, you can see overall they're higher. So I think I'm probably gonna have to go with the lower ones, aren't I? Because the body of this is higher than this one, but overall, they look to be about the same. This is a little bit higher, but I think it'd be okay. Because remember, we've got plastic foam to build up the height anyway. Yeah, that might be pushing it a little bit. 
I think I'm going to go for these ones. Right, for this I'm going to use my good friend, the Low Melt Solder. Really on this one you could just use heat and pop them off because who cares if we burn the switches that's already here. It's just that in burning this we might end up burning this one and this one. So I'm going to try it with low melt, see how easy they come off. If it's a nightmare I'll just use heat and then we can put the good ones on with the soldering iron so we won't damage them. How easy that came off. Right, let's see if I can reuse this uh, low melt up here. Oh, they really are coming off an absolute treat because once you put one on one side, you can just use a soldering iron on the other side to pop them off. Because the soldering iron is quick enough to melt both, uh, you know, to keep the unleaded solder there melted on one side. Oh, that was a joy. Now I'm just going to use a bit of wick to uh, wick up the, the mess. Okay, so that's the old switches off. It really has got a very distinctive smell to it, but I don't know what it is. It stinks. Okay, so now we're going to solder them back on. So how am I going to do this? I think, uh, I suppose I'll just have to tack them in place. Let me just make sure that these are definitely working diagonally. So with the existing ones, they were joined here and here. And yeah, they would have been joined there and there as well. So let's have a look here. Yeah, so they're working on the diagonals or top and bottom. Yeah, okay. Right, let's pop them on. Uh, that seems to be quite central. There we go. Right, so I'm going to do the same on the others now. I'm just cleaning it again, trying to get rid of the flux so it doesn't make the button sticky. I think it's going to be okay because that did click in before, I think. It would be a better job to do all of the buttons. It's just that 
you know, in a few days time, I might have another repair at these buttons and I don't want to use them all on here. I'm still going to be too short anyway because I've only got 10 off each type. And if it fails again, it's not a problem because I can just, uh, I know what the problem is now. I can just pop this bit off and uh, I don't even need to dismantle it. I can just work from uh, work from here on top of the radio. Right, okay, we are done. And let's just check one more time for continuity. So now if I go here and here. Yes, if I go here and here. Yes. Here and here, yes. The menu one, I think the menu one was the most important, and that one there. Right, okay, let's temporarily put it back together. Well, I think that's together enough to test, so now let's see what it's going to do. Let's plug it in again. Put it into the back here. Obviously, the aerials are not connected. And uh, right, okay, here we go. Let's see if it has more life than it did before. I've only got one speaker plugged in. No signal. Stop playing, that's exactly what happened before. Let's now see, can I turn it on here? Ah, here we go, FM. Why is there no sound? Uh, tuner. Anyway, it's doing more than it did before. We still haven't got sound though. Mind you, I haven't got the aerial connected. Uh, surely there should be some sort of static even without the aerial. Oh, it comes up with a clock when you turn it off there. That's quite nice. Right, do you know what I'm gonna do? I am gonna put it back together and solder up the wires and stuff. I can't do the aerials because it needs to be kind of together in order to do the aerials. And then if I have to take it apart again, so be it. So uh, just uh, bear with me for a bit. I'm just going to do this off camera now. Just get it back together, solder the arrows on, and then see now when it's together. It might be because it's not, not recognising any signals that it's not going any further. Right, now, everything is back together. Just it's all over the place. So now, let's turn it on. Let's see now with the aerial whether it can recognise anything. Ah, uh, still not working. Yeah. Right, uh, I think this is a bad item for a tea break repair. I think there's too much to do. Let's check the speakers just in case. There's no sound, is there? Just in case it's unlikely, but in case they're both faulty. The problem is it's not scanning for networks and stuff, so the Wi Fi is uh, not working. So that is 8 ohm speakers, 9 ohm speakers. Let's have a look here. And. Yeah, well, there is a difference between them, but seven ohm speaker. Right. Four ohm. Four ohm, okay. They're quite a bit different than what, they, what it's reading. Anyway, that should stay, they should still be producing some sort of sound. Okay, progress has been made. So I managed to connect it to my Wi-Fi. When I was ent entering the password, it was painful because you had to keep rotating this and it was lowercase a, uppercase a, lowercase b, uppercase b, lowercase c, etc. right the way through. And uh, after all that, it failed. But then when I did it via WPS, it worked. So uh, it was really not very uh, intuitive. But anyway, now that I've got it connected to the internet, it's given me the wrong time. It's down as 13.58 when in fact it's 14.58. But, uh, yeah, which is a bit odd, but maybe I can change daylight saving or something. But look, obviously I haven't got the aerial properly done yet, but if I go to list, here we go. And now you see, I can scroll through. And then if I click it, eventually it will connect. But there's no sound, so listen now. Can you hear? No sound at all. So, now I think the problem might be to do with this chip in here. I think the diagnosis of this failed because the sound chip went, and then it's been stored in the garage somewhere and water's got into it, or it's been thrown outside. It's been thrown in the skip, who knows? But uh, I think the water ingress had nothing to do with the original fault. So, uh, yeah, now I'm gonna take apart this bit here and see what's happening. So this is gonna be the most stressed part of it because you can see the massive heat sink on it to try to get the heat away from here. Right, 
Right, let's zoom in and see what it says on the chip. Okay, so... I recognise that symbol, but I can't remember what it's from. That's not Texas Instruments, is it? But look, TDA7297. I'm going to Google that. Right, so I've typed in TDA7297SA into Google and it's come up with this here. 10 watt plus 10 watt dual bridge amplifier. Wide supply voltage range. Basically it says here that it's a dual bridge amplifier specially designed for TV and portable radio applications. Now if you have a look here, it's got a pin out. And can you see here? The outer two are the out there and the outer two are the out down here. But look, we've got VCC, which hopefully I can measure, and VCC, and we also got in and in. So what I'm wondering is, would I be able to put up a separate little speaker and see whether, if I go across the in, whether we'll get sound out? If we do, then we know that this amplifier has failed. If we've got nothing coming into this, then you can't expect this to work. Also, we need to check to see if we've got VCC as well. So uh, yeah, interesting. Let's try that. So we know the outer two are to do with the speakers here and here. And if we flip it over, you can see sure enough, the outer two go to the speakers because these are the connections for the speakers. And these two go to the speakers. So now this one here is going to be VCC and this one's VCC. Is it actually connected to there? I suppose it doesn't need to be. I presume you only need to have the one uh, voltage going into the chip. So from here, it goes to here, it goes to here. Yeah, so I don't think it's connected there, but it's connected through the chip probably. Now, is that the big capacitor? Yes, it is. And that's gonna be the positive of the capacitor, fine. So we can measure for voltage there when it's on. Now. These ones here then are the volt, uh, are the audio in, I think. That one there and, could it be that one? Yeah, here we go, look, one, two, one second. One, two, three, four, the back one here, excellent. That one there going off to that resistor, nice little thin trace just because it's just gonna be audio in. And one, two, three, four, again, going up here. So we got two ins. So if we put it back together, and if I was to get my own little Bluetooth speaker, you know, just with a 3.5 millimeter jack on it, and probe here and here, I wonder would we get any sound? Let's try it. Okay, so I've got my phone over here playing some Spotify. I've got it going into here. I need to move this until we get to aux in. Aux in, aux in, so now I can hear it. What? I can hear it. Why can I hear it? It's very quiet though. Was this causing some sort of short on it? Okay. Uh, right, let's turn that off in case I get a copyright strike. It's very quiet though. One second, is it loud on my phone though? It's working, why is it working? This must have been putting a short on it. This must have been shorting through, the oh, I've got this disconnected. Right, one minute, let me just uh, turn this off. Let's see if we put this back on and whether, it's, uh, whether it plays up. That's interesting. Right, turn it back on again. Right, aux in. Now let's press play. Ah. It's not working, is it? So let's disconnect this top one. Whoa. Ha <laughs> ha! Right, something on here is putting a fault on it. And there was me blaming this chip down here. I've got to be careful now because there's no heat sink on it. Yeah, lots of volume there now. 
Right, uh, what is it? So I think this is to do with FM. Because look, we've got no static, no noise, no nothing on FM. But yet, if I was to go to DAB, let's see if DAB works. Yeah, there you go. Fantastic. Okay, well, for me, that's the best thing that could fail. But I just want to double check. I'm going to type in some of this online just to see if it is an FM module. And then, uh, yeah, maybe we can maybe we can see if we can fix this. It might be interesting. Well, so I Googled this module here, Keystone Semiconductor 160UFL. I've put in D7 and 07, and it's not it's not coming up with anything. But when I put in Keystone Semiconductor, uh, yeah, they do specialise in, it says here, look. So this is the uh, website here. And it says that it's the world's first and only true FM DAB DAB plus the MBR single chip that's fully integrated triple band RF demodulator audio decoder DSP MCU flash memory audio DAC onto a compact 1 centimeter 1.1 centimeter by 0 0.8 centimeter BGA package and it features the lowest cost DAB slideshow and blah 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 so in other words it does everything on one chip so uh, what I will do is I've just gone across these little caps here they're not showing a short there's a cap and inductor there cap there cap there they're all testing okay what I will do is I'm just going to unsolder that point that point and that point let's have a look on the inside but if it's BGA what that says to me that the chip itself is fried the little bit of looking I've done now, I can't actually buy these. Well, I mean, obviously you can buy them, but they're not on places like eBay and I can't find them on Google. If you were to contact the company, maybe if you bought a hundred of them, you'd be able to buy them. But I don't think you can get them individually anyway. So uh, maybe they're compatible with other ones. Maybe I could just plug in a different FM modulator type thing into here and it would work, I don't know. But for this instance here, it's really not necessary. It's the internet radio that I want here, not the FM, not at all. Weird thing is, why is DAB working if this is supposed to be DAB as well? Not too sure. But anyway, I'm gonna, uh, let's unsolder that and see what's going on. Now, so something on here is stopping the sound from working. So, is there some sort of short? Well, we've got plenty of caps, so shall we go around the caps and see if there's any uh, any shorts on them? I mean, I think it's just gonna be the, probably the main chip, but you never know. So we use this as a ground. Right, they're the ones I checked earlier. No. That's a shame. And I can't see any water damage in here either. That's not a BGA chip, that one. So all I can think is that that there has failed. Well, what I will do is I'll put it back on. I just wanna see if any of the chips are getting hot because that might tell me which chip is faulty. It's nothing I can do about it anyway. I can't, uh, I haven't got any of these chips to change it with. And I don't think it would cause it, but I've also disconnected this just in case there's some kind of fault with this cable where it's shorting the inner and outer one together. I don't think that would cause a problem, but uh, just in case it does knock it out. All right, so I've just got my video playing down here and I can't hear anything at all. So let's see if anything's getting warm. No. I want to see if it kicks in as soon as this gets... Oh, okay. So it's this side here. Is that side still connected? Hurry up, Vince, it's supposed to be a tea break repair. Right, I'm gonna clean up this horrible big box of mold and the fault 100% is on the module. I can't buy that module easily. Obviously they do exist, but I can't find them. Maybe I can get one off another DAB radio. They might be a very common part, just FM module. Maybe they're the same ones in all of these kind of uh, radios, whether or not they're internet based or not. So uh, yeah, 
I'm just giving this a nice good clean up next time you're going to see this now it's going to be all back together and hopefully it will look nice and I can show you it working. At long last against all the odds it's come up looking pretty nice. When it was in bits it looked awful but now that it's together and I've cleaned it well, I'm happy with it. Look, It's looking well. So internet radio is now working i've got midwest radio this is coming all the way from ireland so let's just put up the volume so i know he listens to this games on thursday in the Mayo football league they're in the under 21 division one and two so this is coming out from the midwest of uh, ireland so like the mayo region so he's going to love that and now if i go to menu and go over to dab you will see that DAB is working as well. I'm not quite sure how, because that module's gone. But listen, have uh, made their way up the one. We know there are problems further up the M1, so some could be. There we go. And if I turn it off here, you will see it will revert to a uh, clock here. And if I do this, it will even tell the weather. So I've got it set up to London. So yeah, happy days. It's come out looking good. I'm happy with it. And I'm going to give this to my dad so he's got it now as a replacement if that other one dies. Or do you know what? He'll probably put this up in his bedroom and then he can listen to it in the morning or uh, evening before going to bed. So uh, yeah, well happy with that in the end. Was it worth £30? No. I think this failed and then I think somebody dumped this in a skip or something. That hasn't just happened from a cup of water being spilt on it. That's some serious water damage that sat in there for a long time. So, yeah, a bit cheeky, I think, to sell this for £30 if the person knew what was wrong with it. And if they got it out for skip, then really, should you be selling something, maybe you should possibly be doing a bit more research or say you got it out of a skip, in my opinion anyway. But uh, I think if something's for repair on eBay, it should be just something that is a real repair rather than something that's been dumped, found and then whacked on eBay because I was under the impression that this was working fine and then it just stopped working in someone's house. Not something that's been dumped and left outside for possibly months on end. So uh, yeah, not the best buy, but uh, hopefully it might have made for an entertaining video, maybe, not too sure. Probably a very long one and probably a boring one. But still, that's the way it goes sometimes. Not everything can be always massively interesting with the clickbaity titles and everything like that. So uh, yeah, that is it for the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a massive thumbs up and I will hopefully see you all very soon. Take care. Right.